Hey everyone, making uh, chili burgers and sweet potato fries. So step one was uh, peeling some yams, cutting them into french fry shapes like this. They're really hot, so I'm gonna actually use this. French fry shapes. Uh, then I blanched them in water for about five minutes, and then now I'm on st step two, which is blanching them in oil. Have my thermometer here, trying to get the oil at about 220 degrees. Nothing glamorous about this and it is time consuming, so. So the hard part about doing this on the stove is I need to keep the oil consistent at a consistent temperature, I'm trying to get it right to that 220, 225 spot for this first blanch in the oil. And then the second cook in the oil, I'll do it about 350. So this is uh, just garnet yams that I've peeled. And now I am taking about five minutes with the blanch and the oil. So there are way easier ways to do this. I could uh, bake sweet potatoes. I'm just trying to get that texture like uh, you'd find in a higher end restaurant. Keeping them still meaty in the middle and crispy on the outside. So I'm using a regular thermometer here, digital. The hard part is I have to keep it from touching the side of the pan so that I get a true reading. And I have to keep adjusting the temperature just to keep it at that 220. So after this step, this is the yams uh, that I'm calling sweet potato fries. That's what we use garnet yams for it. Uh, I have chili that's working here. It's just beef, uh, tomato, some chili powder, chocolate, cayenne pepper, a little bit of red wine too. And then we'll get to our burgers after that. Hi, Amy. So like I said, nothing fancy here. I have about another minute on these and then we'll move on to step two. If you're just joining, I've already blanched these in water for five minutes. These are garnet yams cut into french fries. Let them dry about 10 minutes and now I'm on blanching them in oil. Way easier in a restaurant to have uh, a constant temperature here than trying to do this on the stove, but we'll make do, right? So if you can find them in your grocery store, you can buy the bagged sweet potato fries, no problem there, throw them in the oven really easy. Uh, we just had garnet yam sitting around the house and figured that would go really good with a chili burger tonight. So I keep adjusting this temperature trying to maintain that 250. If you go down to 210 it's fine. If you go up to 230 it's fine as long as you keep it right in that region. It looks like we have about 30 seconds more of this blanche. All right, so I'm gonna turn that off. I'll set this oil aside because when we do our final fry at 350, we'll use the same oil. The hardest part is these have already blanched in water, blanched in oil, so they're going to be cooked. All we're trying to do on that last fry is get them fully crisp. So they're gonna be kind of soggy and they may break coming out of the oil. And that's exactly what's happening. I cut these extra long so that if they do break in half, I'm not too concerned. We still have good fries. Letting them sit on some paper towels so that a lot of that oil drains off. I'm using canola oil for this, uh, mainly because we had it at the house. Peanut oil is a good option. Regular vegetable oil works fine. I would not use olive oil uh, or anything with a super strong flavor and nothing that can't take at least medium heat. 
Uh, at the restaurant, we used rice bran oil, which is used for tempura and a lot of Japanese cooking. Super mild in flavor, really expensive though. Um, so it's not something that you find in your grocery store all the time. And it's, uh, even when you do, it would be cost prohibitive to do this. All right, so pulling out the last couple. And then we'll move on to the burger part. So the, so this will sit here for about 20 minutes. Okay. Let that oil drain. I'll move it off of the heat. And then I have my cast iron pan that we're going to make our burgers with. A seasoned pan's way better than not seasoned. I'll be right back. So I have the last uh, little bit of meat that I had from the restaurant, saving it for an occasion like this. Uh, it's kind of hard to find beef in the grocery store right now, but if you can, this is a super easy thing to do. So giving away my secrets here. So I've taken our beef. This is uh, a combination of ribeye, strip loin, a little bit of brisket, and some short rib. And what I've done is added onion powder, garlic salt, and uh, we use a vegan Worcestershire sauce called Robbie's, but any Worcestershire sauce is fine. So we've mixed that all in. I have two pounds of it right here. I'm gonna make four burgers, four eight ounce burgers. So the few things I'm going to add into it are some kosher salt, handy dandy kosher salt, uh, black pepper, you can, already, you can use either a pepper grinder or you can use already ground. Uh, for this, I'm just gonna use fancy Costco coarse ground black pepper because I can. And just because I'm handling meat, I'm gonna use some ramekins uh, so that I'm not going too far into it. So a little bit of salt in the ramekin, a little bit of black pepper in the other one. Cast iron skillet, I wanna really get a good sear. So what I think I'm gonna do here, and it really depends, because I haven't done this before with this meat blend, we usually use an open flame, but uh, just with the weather outside, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to go out to the barbecue. So I'm gonna sear it in the cast iron, and then I'm probably gonna finish it in the oven. Uh, we'll see, I'll, I'll temp it out and, and see. A lot of uh, the meats and the proteins that you cook, you can do by feel. And the little cheater trick we use, if you take your hands, um, if you just squeeze right here, that would be kind of like what meat would feel rare. And that's medium rare, and that's medium, and that's medium well, and that's well done. And you can tell that this part of your palm gets much harder. So when you're doing the squeeze test, you can actually see how much harder it gets just based on the cooking. All right, so we have our meat. I'm trying to get this cast iron up nice and hot. Just before this on the pan, I had uh, that oil that we were blanching our sweet potato fries with. So it's gonna take just a couple of minutes. Um, I may or may not turn this vent on, so it may get a little loud in here, just because uh, this cast iron is gonna create a lot of smoke. The other thing I'm gonna do is have my oven preheated in case I uh, feel that I need to have it. These are uh, brioche croutons that I'm making for dinner tomorrow night since I have a ton of extra bread. So we can do this one of two ways. So I have two pounds of meat, seasoned onion powder, garlic salt, Worcestershire sauce. Um, I could use a scale and measure it out, or I can just do it by feel. And I've done this enough times that I can do it by feel. So I'm just trying to separate into four eight ounce patties. Because the fat content in this meat with the ribeye, I mean, you can see the amount of fat in here. A lot of this is gonna cook off and turn into kind of like this almost butter. It's gonna be really good. Uh, so it's gonna end up after cooking probably closer to six ounces. So I'm just forming them into pretty even balls. I may pinch a little bit off one to get to the other. And yes, this is the last of the meat from the restaurant. Kind of sad that uh, 
gonna be the last time I get to get this blend. I shout out to my meat purveyor, Central Meat down in San Diego. Uh, they were awesome for all the years that we were open. It was really good stuff. Okay, so now here we are, we have our meat ball. I do it in the balls. You can also cheat and take plastic wrap and wrap it around the ball. I smash it down, I use two hands. And depending on the temperature of the burger that I want, I'll smash more just so that I cook evenly. So if I'm someone wants well done, someone wants medium, I may may or may not uh, smash it down even more. So now we have a patty. This is what I would call a medium one. Uh, what I do is season with salt and pepper on both sides. Doing it from the height isn't really much of anything other than helping it distribute evenly. And then the last thing I do is I pinch with my middle finger and my thumb right in the middle. And what that does is helps the meat cook evenly. Otherwise you get that little bubble in the middle and the burger's super raw in the middle and then uh, gets super well on the outside. So this helps the heat penetrate that center just a little bit more. Kind of hard to do this with the, the frozen burgers, which is why I really don't use those very much. Uh, with ground beef, for me, as long as I know where it's been and know how it's been handled, I'm fine with it. Um, I'm fine with it medium rare. Uh, just it needs to be handled properly. And the other thing is I don't just like ground beef because ground beef can be organ meat. It can be just basically any part of the leftover cow that uh, they throw into a package. My cast iron's starting to smoke here behind me, so I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. So knowing what I'm grinding here is a huge advantage. I mean, I know that this is the end of the ribeye. This is part of that strip. It's basically those parts of the meat that you might not normally eat, but grinding it helps tenderize it and uh, put it in kind of that edible form. So just seasoning burger number three here. I'm gonna go to the other side. Put my hole right in the middle. And here's the last one. So smashing it, you don't wanna really smash it too much so that you lose some of the texture. You wanna, at least in my opinion, you wanna always have something that has a bite to it. And so whether you grind, I wouldn't, do double grind on most things because you, what you don't want to do is end up with mush. And the other thing is when you smash something, especially while it's cooking, you end up losing all the great juice that you have. So here's our four patties. And this guy is smoking. I'm going to turn it back up to high because it's going to lose a lot of temp as soon as I put these cold patties in. And it's about to sizzle. Here we go. So these are gonna shrink a little bit. I'm gonna go wash my hands and I'll be right back with you. So they're in a cast iron pan right now. They're gonna go for probably about five minutes on each side with the thickness that I have. Uh, we're really looking for a crust. It's super important to get that. It helps sear the juices in the burger if you want something like that. Uh, I know some people... Sorry, it looks like my internet's not the fanciest thing. Uh, so it... Uh, it's just gonna go in, you can actually see it shrink. So I kind of crowded the pan a little bit, uh, but you see the space is already starting to form here. And since this is the first time I'm using this meat blend in this cast iron, I'm probably gonna end up pulling it out because it's sitting in a lot of the grease and then I'll finish it in the oven because I think it'll uh, help keep that crust there and not get it too soggy. So we'll probably go for another couple of minutes. We'll get the sear, we'll sear the other side. I don't wanna flip it too many times. 
I'm not trying to smash it down or do anything like that. I'll get the temp uh, just by allowing it to, to cook. And then the last thing will happen is I'll actually go from medium rare to medium or medium to medium well just by letting it rest for five minutes or so. Uh, the other thing I've already made is this chili. So it's gonna go on the burgers. So the chili is the same meat blend. So it's just the ground beef. I use tomato paste, tomato sauce, uh, chili powder, a little bit of vinegar, apple cider vinegar, chocolate, amazingly enough, it's really good. Uh, a little bit of cayenne pepper, and then a few other spices that I just threw in, uh, just because that's it, they looked good. So burgers are still going, probably one more minute, and then we'll be at flip time. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of using uh, the Teflon turners in a cast iron pan, but that's what I have, so it's what I'm gonna use. But for uh, cast iron, I love using metal. It just you're, it helps you scrape up those bits. Uh, these are great for stainless steel pans and nonstick pans. So I'm gonna move the cutting board out of the way here. So I have the chili, I have the oven preheating. Uh, I'm gonna end up putting buns in the oven toward the end. I have oil that's over here that'll go back onto this burner once these go in the oven. And, and that's it, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. The last few things I'll do, I could have done in advance, I chose not to, I'm gonna do some onion and tomato. And, and that's about it. So I will be back in about 15 minutes and show you the finished product.